Alright, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be reading a book called Edward Hopper Paints His World based on an artist. And this actual artwork right here is actually in the Art Institute of Chicago. So if you do visit the museum in Chicago, uh, you'll see this one. So anyways, uh, let's get going and we'll go from there. So let's get started. <laughs> Alright, here we are. And uh, let's get started reading this book. Uh, let's skip the inside cover and let's start with the book right away. It is a long book. We I don't know how long it's going to take. It feels pretty thick, so we'll see. All right, Edward Hopper Paints His World. All right, let's get starting from the beginning. Little Edward Hopper had many dreams, but one dream was the biggest of all. He was going to be a painter when he grew up. On the cover of his pencil box, he printed these bold wor words would-be artist. Edward drew and drew. He often gazed at the nearby Hudson River from his bedroom window, a drawing pad on his desk moving his pencil carefully. He would watch a sailboat or a seagull slowly emerge on the page. Magical! Sometimes he signed his youthful drawings like adult artists do, with his name in the lower corner. Edward Hopper. He even has an art desk. It's really cool. Wow, what a view. Tall and gangly, Edward grew quickly. His teasing schoolmates called him Grasshopper because of his long, thin legs. While other boys played baseball or ran races, Edward often walked to the riverbank to draw. The sunlight on the water's rippling surface was so beautiful. Still, to paint it exactly as it looked, it was hard. Edward wondered, will I ever be able to paint things the way they appear to be? Ah, why can't I turn the page? After high school, Edward set off for New York City to study illustration and painting. What an amazing time it was, the beginning of the 20th century. The great, lively metropolis buzzed with excitement and possibilities. Edward Hopper, filled with hope, felt he was becoming a real artist at last. He took classes, he studied, he worked. I've been there. But to become the painter he wanted to be, Edward needed to learn even more. Paris called out to him. It was home to some of the world's most famous artists. Edward's trip to Paris opened a universe to, of new thoughts about painting. Always shy, he made few close friends on his travels. Yet, he did make friends with many works of art, visiting museums and starring for tours at the pictures he found there. Sorry, staring. <laughs> staring for hours at the pictures he found there. He took time to paint outdoors too. The light and the shadows of Paris, he wrote, are different from anything I've ever known. I think I've been here too. All right. Brimming with ideas for pictures, Edward returned to New York. He took a job illustrating for magazines where some of his illustrations won prizes. Even so, he wasn't happy drawing pictures that others told him to draw. He wanted to paint the subject that moved him deeply. But how? Kind of like what I have over here. Same desk. That's not so woody. All right, here we go. To save money, he rented an inexpensive apartment on the top floor of an old building. His rooms were heated only by a single stove, which he filled with coal he hauled up each day from the basement. The bathroom wasn't even in the apartment. It was down the hall. But who cared? There was a space for him to paint. America was changing, and Edward was eager to make art in a fresh, new American way. There was one big problem. No one wanted to buy his paintings. Still, he didn't give up. Because he was fascinated by the look and feel of old houses, Edward began to make paintings of them. Once he remarked, all he wanted to do was paint sunlight on the side of a house. But maybe Edward liked to paint houses for another reason. Many houses in his paintings seem moody, quiet, and alone. Were Edward's houses a bit like Edward himself? When he was nearly 42 years old, he married another artist. Her name was Joe Nivison. Years before Edward and Joe had been fellow students in art school, Joe gave Edward love, encouragement, and support. She was the model for most of the women in his paintings. 
She kept a careful diary explaining how he created his work, and along with Edward, she loved reading poetry, going to plays, and watching movies. They worked together too. Sometimes they drove into the country where they painted in the open air. If the weather was bad, they even painted in the car. At other times, they drove north along the Atlantic coast, where Edward often painted the lighthouses they saw along the way. His lighthouse paintings were among his most beautiful works. The paint globes, the tall lighthouses rise up, gleaming in the sunlight, looming above land and sea. Joe and Edward later built a small cottage by the bay in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, where they spent summers working and relaxing. Here, Edward painted many pictures of the sea. As he drove through the nearby countryside, Edward stayed on the lookout for scenes that moved him. Not pretty gardens and pleasant farms, but lonely roads, deserted buildings, or dying businesses. One painting, Gas, shows an isolated gas station and captures the quiet emptiness that he discovered on his explorations. Yet Edward Hopper still loved the city. He spent many hours walking through New York streets and has always he was searching. He was looking for that what other artists didn't paint. He wanted to paint what others didn't see. Edward wanted to paint what only he saw. Wandering through the city, sketchbook in hand, he looked and looked. He saw faces staring out from upstairs windows. He saw a bored usher standing quietly in the lobby of a movie theater. He saw a weathered storefront in the stillness of an early Sunday morning. He brought his sketches back to his studio where he worked patiently. Sometimes he took weeks to complete a single painting. Edward also, sorry, Edward also explored the city at night, riding the elevated train through the city. He stared out the window and watched pictures flow by, almost like scenes from a movie that only he could see. There, a couple reading in their living room. There, there, sorry, there, a couple reading in the living room. There, a man working late in a dim office. There, a lonely stroller on a dark street. Often, the people were serious. They seemed slightly sad. What had happened to them? What was about to happen? Uh, these small mysteries became the subject for many of Edward Hopper's paintings. But Edward didn't just copy what he saw. His paintings often combined things he sketched in his travels. A cafe on a deserted street corner, customers drinking coffee, lost in thought, or dark shadows on an eerie green pavement. Starting with scenes and details like these, Edward used his imagination to create some of his best known pictures. One famous painting shows solitary people sitting at a counter in an all-night diner. The painting is called Nighthawks. It was, I was painting the loneliness of a large city, he later explained. And by the way, this painting's in Chicago. That's what I was talking about. As the years passed, more people saw Edward's paintings. Museums wanted to display his work. Critics began to see something strange and wonderful in his pictures. But Edward and Joe continued to live simply in their cottage on Cape Cod or in their New York apartment. And Edward, as always, continued to paint. Once someone asked Edward why he painted, he paused a moment and said, why do I paint? Well, he finally answered, I'm after me. Yes, Edward wanted his paintings to show that he saw what he saw, what he felt, and who he really was. One of his later works is, the, is Sun in an Empty Room. We see a room with light pouring through a window. Nothing more, all is calm, all is still. Was Edward satisfied at last? Whether it was lighthouses, people in lonely diners, or simply light on a wall, Edward Hopper had searched for, discovered, and painted his special world. And that's the end. All right, so these are four of Op Edward, Hop uh, sorry, Edward Hopper's paintings. Early Sunday morning, Lighthouse Hill, Gas, and Nighthawks. And um, only this one is in Chicago. The other ones are in other places. But anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that book about Edward Hopper. I sure did. And why don't we do something related to this book? So let's get going. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that book. Uh, I found a cool art project online. I pulled it from my phone. And we're basically gonna do um, something based on like a, a lighthouse and a little house right beside it. So 
I think uh, it's gonna turn. It's, I think it's gonna be turning out really cool. So I really wanted to do it. I was gonna do Nighthawks, but I think this will be a little easier. So, anyways, let's get started. So I'm gonna draw the land first, and it looks like we did a little bit of an incline from here down to here. Looks great. And then they did two towers, same height. So we're gonna start with one triangle here, and then another triangle on this side. Let me just make sure they're the same height. Close enough. And then they bring both sides of those triangles down, just like so. Let me just jump ahead, see if I have to erase anything later on. Nope, I do not have to erase anything later on. So let me keep going. Alright. Next step, we're going to connect these all lines all together. So I'm going to connect this to this. Connect this to this. And it looks like there is a slight line right here to the middle. And then from here down. All right, and it looks like they added a tiny bit of a building on the side. So we'll add that as well. Oop, wake up phone. Here we go. It looks like they added the windows and chimney. So here is the chimney. It looks like there's windows on each side. Very simple rectangles here. And they added a window on this side. And then they added a door on this side. Okay. All right, next step. It looks like we're going to be working on the lighthouse. So the lighthouse has a big wide base. So from here to there. And it looks like they kind of made some levels to it to have, to have it more dimension. Or to give it more dimension, sorry. And then it looks like it goes up to this height right here. So I'm going to draw a little horizontal line. And then I'm going to angle it down. Just like so. All right, looks like the top of the lighthouse, they have a couple lines here, so let's copy that. Looks like there is about one... Actually, you know what? Let me just make it into a dome first. Let me just add the two lines to the side. Curve it a little bit. There we go. Top of the peak. There, and curve down. And if there's inside part, now I can do it. I'm just going to do random lines to make all the way across. There you go. All right, it looks like they are trying to create some sort of handrail. So I'm going to try to do the exact same thing. Looks like one goes over it like that. And then we'll go like this. And then it looks like I kind of connect these two together. And add the handrails. So it looks like it goes all the way around. Nice. All right, what is the next step after that? All right, it looks like I'm done with the drawing. Looks like the next steps after that is just a coloring it in. So here's just a zoom in of what's going on. It says paint sky, grass, yellow. It's paint sky, grass and yellow, light as shown. Add orange and black. Add gray shadows and dark green on grass. So it looks like they did this in watercolor. Um, you can if you like. Um, I'm just gonna do it in normal crayon and we'll go from there. All right, so let me just follow along. So it looks like they did kind of like these kind of blues here. I'm going to mix them up. Let me just remove my phone. And I think we're done. So anyways, that's the lighthouse, a picture inspired by Edward Hopper that I found online. And I hope you guys enjoyed the book. 
And that's basically it. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.